Hey everyone, it's me again. This time, we're taking a little pause on all of the day, all of the diary updates that I've been making these past few weeks. And I'm going to be focusing more on something that kind of has been on my mind for a while until it eventually got away. Well, uh, with the release of with the release of Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero, I'm going to take it upon myself to share my experience with Dragon Ball in general. And here's one thing, though. I did not start up like everyone else, you know, in the original Dragon Ball anime. I initially started Dragon Ball Z itself from the good old Arabic channel called Space 2. Some of you heard of it, some of you haven't. Space 2 was basically the equivalent, was basically one of at least two, uh, one of three uh, anime and slash cartoon streaming channels. And, it, and since that it's an Arabic channel, it definitely has some good old Arabic dubs. And here's another thing to know about the Arabic dubs. When most of these medias land into, into these types of channels, the anime itself, along with its story and most of the dialogue, they receive a really, really drastic change. And it's for one thing, to appeal to the younger generation more than the old generation. So, lots of dialogues and story related stuff have kind of been altered drastically. And the only thing that I was able to remember was from watching that was with my when watching the part of the Goku versus Vegeta fight when he when Goku was doing the spirit bomb. And pretty much the biggest part was the Frieza saga. At least some of it. Especially when Goku was doing the spirit bomb at Frieza. And believe it or not the amount of time and weight that I have got seeing Goku trying to charge up the spirit bomb was kind of astounding, you know. It was pretty damn bad, I'm not gonna lie. But I didn't see him turn Super Saiyan and all of this. Because when later on I have seen Super seeing Goku's hair changing to yellow and all of these fusions and well Gohan and everything else it all kind of got kind of confusing and essentially enough it was it had been re-released again under the name of Dragon Ball Z Kai but not the Dragon Ball Z Kai that everyone is expecting oh no it's just Brand old Dragon Ball Z with the same ter with the same nowadays terrible Arabic opening. With the addition of that, I was able to see Piccolo fusing with Nail. I mean, hey, that's another part I was able to catch up with. So most of my experience from Dragon Ball came from the video game. And I kid you not, everyone. From the moment I've been seeing the story being repeated many times within the game, I got slowly tired of it. And my very first true Dragon Ball experience from the game was from playing a demo on my relative's PS3 back in the day of Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. I liked that game. It was pretty good, 
and the team and the team mechanics work great. Although I really can't say the same when I eventually got my hands on it, you know, fully. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that game sucked. But it does have two qualities that make it stand out nowadays. The team play mechanic and the, op the inclusion of the upload version of Chala Head Chala. Those were two great qualities in my opinion. Others might differ. Eventually, I've tried to get into playing most of the pretty much uh, most notable games for the franchise. And, you know, I eventually started out with Dragon Ball Z Super Pertoli. And I'm not gonna lie, the old, the older games that were based upon the Japanese anime were not the best games to start with. Yeah, especially the Pertoli game. Being that I was a 2000 kid that barely has any knowledge about retro games and how they work, especially in fighting games and fighting game movements, it was just that bad. Like, I'm not gonna lie, Dragon Ball Z Super Praetorium 1 in particular, it had this real sense of not being able to beat it. And the worst part, you have to play that game on hard mode to get a true ending. Just like almost every other fucking fighting game. Especially Street Fighter 2. Like, why does it have to be the Street Fighter 2 route to get the true ending? How about we just play the fucking game on easy difficulty and get the true ending out of this? I mean, come on. I can't, I can't literally throw out the fucking Kamehameha without it being deflected or tanked up like fucking crazy. Like, jeez, let me hit that shit for once. Then eventually, got tired of it and had pretty much decided to play Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1. I'm not, not gonna lie, the fact that it had the anime presentation in full 3D was pretty good. And the voice, and the voice acting, how did I get to the voice acting part really later on? Cause it is one of those animes that really confused me on whether it's great in dub or great in sub. That's how I'm going to get into later on. For now, let's just talk about the games that I played back in the day. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1 was a nuzzle learning experience. But I mean, hey, since it's not as hard as the Super Pertoli series, that one SNES RPG game, which was not the Koku, the Goku game, but the Legend of the Super Saiyan kind of RPG. And the Goku game, game as well. And it kind of it kind of felt weird hearing Goku's Japanese voices and every other character's Japanese voice. You know. It was it felt a little weird. I mean, hey, I used to play Naruto all the time with Japanese voice dub options. So it eventually felt natural. Not much. <laughs> Eventually, uh, moved on to the PSP territory and started playing the shit out of a demo of Budokai Tenkaichi, of the Tenkaichi Tag Team game. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it used to be pretty good. Like, really, really good. Although, the mechanics were a little bit too clunky for me. For a Budokai Tenkaichi game. And then there is the Shin Budokai 1 and Shin Budokai Another World. And I'm not gonna lie, Shin Budokai 1 was probably one of the best Dragon Ball experiences of all time. 
Why? Because it reminded me of playing Burst Limit on my relative modded PS3. Because <sighs> eventually, before even exploring all those other games, uh, I have stumbled upon my relative modded PS3, and it had a copy of Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it was a really good experience. Plus, Kisuki no no yo, moe agare yo, kimi no tokao ni, milai mo tame. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite vocal songs of Dragon Ball. That is also another part that I'll get to into later on. The game was another great masterpiece that I have explored. But then later on, later on, that wasn't in my list. That wasn't, you know, in range to be able to download it whatsoever. And back then, download, just downloading most of these games wasn't a simple feat. So, yeah, lots of restrictions were on there. So I was lucky enough to be able to get the PSP, two of the most P the best PSP Dragon Ball games. Started with Shin Budokai 1. And like I said, it was great. It was probably a great masterpiece. And most of that intro music, yeah, it sure set a pretty cool tone and so forth. And lots of other, lots of other things, like the character variations, the fights. Sure, the stories weren't that creative, but I mean, hey, it was good. So that was never. Eventually, uh, eventually there was Dragon Ball and Shin Budokai Under the Road. It took things to another level. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Most of it was good. Well, the rest was just really mad. And it was, but I mean, the mechanics got a little bit cooler. While the story wasn't, wasn't that good as well. Meanwhile, and eventually, I would still be loyal to the Dragon Ball Z Budokan 1 from Sims. But then I'm not gonna lie, the fact that you have had to rotate your analog stick just to progress through the story is kinda shitty. Like, really shitty. I even tried using, you know, I've even tried literally like rotating the analog stick using keyboard controls back in the day wasn't really optional and here's the thing i didn't have a fucking controller that had analog sticks back then until eventually i was able to get an analog analog stick controller and then boom yeah section passed Well, the rest of the game felt pretty natural. And here's another thing that felt entirely crazy. There was this one mode that inc that had, uh, I think it was a survival mode. I think it was a survival mode. And I literally played, and I was literally playing as Mr. as Hercule. And there was this one move that I used to spam it on like everyone that eventually kills them. Like, goddamn. It's easy. Like, goddamn. Either that or it was uh, another, an another, uh, another side story mode that featured Hercule. Hmm. Can't really remember it that much. But I'm not gonna lie, that mode was funny, 
appeared a little bit interesting because I was able to make him a bit strong to be able to fight off most of the enemies. <laughs> like I said, it was pretty hilarious. Eventually, I would stumble also upon the PC Engine Dragon Ball game, I Dainaru Son Goku Densetsu. And I'm not gonna lie to you, that game is visually amazing. And equipped with some good tracks, and, and of course it had the iconic opening. Remade in PC Engine quality. And even most of the cutscenes remade in PC Engine quality. That is just fucking awesome, you know? And you would even have the anime cast, Japanese anime cast at least, because that game was in Japan only. Then I would reach to another set of games that were pretty old, including GT Final Bell. And I'm not gonna lie to you, as a guy, even as a guy who used to be a, a little bit of a but Toten veteran, that game kind of sucked. Like especially the concept of making a but a 3D but Toten style game for Dragon Ball GT type of game, bruh. Why? Why would they do that? And then comes in. You have some, then comes in the code, code. You need to type in a, a simple code so that you can literally unlock a few set of characters and have the full roster every time you boot up the damn game. Even when you have it saved, you still gotta do the code. And well, there is that other dub to the game. The English dub of it is, good lord, <laughs> it's really, really hilarious for most of the time. Show me what you got. Yeah. But I mean, I guess this kind of thing gets to us since we were too familiar with the Funimation dub. And Goku certainly does not fit fit into that other dub, along with the others. <sighs> Meanwhile, there is Shin Patoden on the Saturn. Great and everything, but... Like, you know, anime-style graphics with a pretty decent com Batoden-style combat, but... Yeah, the gameplay is not that good. Then there's Ultimate Battle 22. It's worse. <laughs> like, actually worse. And then, there is that Dragon Ball Z, I Dino Dragon Ball Densetsu. And well, as much as I would like to play it more, but damn, the game is in Japan only. Like most of the, most of the decent and the shitty obscure games are Japan only. And, and with a gem like I Dino or Dragon Ball and Goku Densetsu being Japan only and aren't fan translated yet. Like come the fuck on guys. Fan translate those games. <laughs> I literally want to know what the fuck are those three modes while playing that Goku Densetsu and what the fuck to do in general inside the other game. Uh, yeah. At any case, in any case, I used to play most of these games a lot. Along with a few other games. And well, years have passed and 
kind of the same story kind of the fact that the same story was being played over and over was kind of something to behold and well eventually I would stumble across uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1 especially after seeing the, the very first trailer of it and well it was certainly something then I would eventually play it on my relative PS3 and I'm not gonna lie it was pretty good at first at first and then I kinda had an obsession on it and well was able to get it and I'm not gonna lie this was a short a short-lived fun experience in it and then I was seeing all of those other games and well here's the thing by only seeing the uh, YouTube videos on them I don't know I kind of felt that the franchise didn't really have that much But before all of that, I've kind of decided to, at some point I've decided to try and watch, uh, and actually watch the Dragon Ball series, at least the Z one. But then I kind of gave up midway, didn't even start watching it. And eventually I have been seeing all kinds of stuff about Dragon Ball the Resurrection of the Resurrection of F and the Battle of Gods movie. I watched those two movies and let me tell you, it was kinda insane. Especially the Battle of Gods and the Resurrection and Frieza's Resurrection. I would say it was pretty damn those two were pretty damn cool. Not gonna lie. And then comes in. Uh, and then comes in the Xenoverse. One might say it was a decent experience. But then after seeing Xenoverse 2 and actually playing it. Good God. Like. Good fucking god. That game really, really have been cooked and then, you know, milked to the brim. Like, sure, I appreciate most of the content, the story, the parallel quest, everything is cool. But what really have been completely fucked up is the battle system. Seriously, I know the purpose of the battle system upgrade was to make it better, but no, just no. That game is awful. Really, really, that game plays awful. It makes a single fight go on forever. And it's not even equivalent to the anime in any shape. Like, I get it, we're trying to make this as realistically accurate to the anime as possible, but... I'm sorry, but... That kinda doesn't work. Like, are we even hitting the opponent? Like, is anyone even getting hit? Am I hitting my opponent with my blast? Scratch that. Are any of our attacks even have any usage at all? Then there are all these raid boss events. And these other raid quests. Like, come on. And then there's a part where the protagonist, where the character, where the custom character even gets fucking corrupted. And he has to fight with his inner self. 
while he's trapped in a limbo and some other dumb stuff happening. <sighs> as much as I like the as much as I like the story and everything else, the gameplay really, really sucked ass. The first universe with its almost basic gameplay was much better than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Others can disagree. But I mean, that's just my opinion. Eventually, I have gone to myself into trying out uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, first from the demo, and then from the official, you know, full game. And I'm not gonna lie to you, the game was pretty damn decent, you know? An open world with a choice to either progress in the story, or to play some more sub Quests that would reveal some more of what we have been missing out in the anime that much, you know? And then do some other side quests like hunting, fishing. But then there is a problem that I've had with the game. One, some of the you know, some of the sections meant boss battles are not the best, you know. And two, the community power leveling up system, like, like I can understand that this game needs to have an RPG feel of it, but uh, what was all the pins and the community and all of this stuff in between? Like, uh, is any of that necessary? Like, what in the world has happened to regular leveling up and to grow up your skill tree as the game progresses and whatsoever? Like, even Final Fantasy XV with its giant ass skill tree of pretty much almost everything. It's it's a bit more applicable than this game, I'm sorry. And then of course... And then of course comes in Sparking Zero. Now... I haven't really watched it. I haven't fully watched the anime nor fully experience some of the infamous games. But I can tell one thing. Dragon Ball, this is gonna be probably the biggest hot take, but Dragon Ball has kinda became very stale. Really, really stale. Like at the very beginning, it had begun like really, uh, really decent. You know, in the original anime, just a little kid fighting off to save his world. You know, a typical anime stuff. Except that Goku can make us laugh a little bit on his, you know, lack of intelligence on most things. Then, there are... Uh, then, the Dragon Ball Z, the Dragon Ball Z saga comes in. And at first, at least in the Saiyan and the, at least in the Saiyan and the Frieza saga, it was going pretty well. At the Cell saga and the, at least the beginning of the Boo saga, it was going pretty well. Or at least after Goku became Super Saiyan 3. Again, I haven't watched, again, I haven't watched the full anime, but like, from my experience with the games and how the games have in interpreted this kind of stuff, it just kind of felt very, very tame, you know, almost close to being very lame. 
not to mention uh they're not to mention watching the two movies the resurrect Frieza's resurrection and the uh, battle of god those were also making the anime pretty exciting and then there's even the dragon ball gt that was also that is also an interesting iteration of dragon ball that i that I would watch in Japanese because of the of the opening song. <sighs> well, I'm just gonna say that the anime have definitely became very lame afterwards. I mean, come on, Dragon Ball Super. And the, and the worst part of this is that the anime begins on literally making episodic fucking, on uh, making some episodes based upon the resurrection of F and Battle of Gods with the animation budget and uh, most of the things becoming worse, like really worse. And then comes the tournament of power arcs all the way until the until the current arc that I have been missing out on. And I'm not gonna lie to you, but it has became really, really lame, you know. I mean I get it. New forms for the sake of saving the world and all of this but i don't know yeah the franchise just felt pretty damn lame after super like super just became pretty lame like it was going pretty decent and then at the boo saga went pretty meh but then after the but then later on it just became worse i mean come on people would literally love to watch Dragon ball gt more than more than that shit on super and like nowadays goku can pretty much destroy an entire planet by just sneezing at this point <laughs> you know and then the and then the amount of explosion on the fucking you know super ultra mega and knuckles kind of emission emissions into into anyone like i you could literally have super ultra mega angel evil evil god mecha goku and super fucking Ultra Saiyan and Knuckles featuring funky mode Vegeta and Krillin with a hat. <laughs> like Krillin with a hat would probably be his final form. <laughs> Along with, uh, you know, Chaozu with a top hat. And the same goes for, and well, uh, Kia. I would say give him the, give him a helmet, a biker's helmet, you know. And don't even get me started on most of the character creation OCs that came out from Xenoverse 2 and 1. Good fucking lord. And then the fusions, oh god. Dragon Ball Fusions on its own is a massive fucking disaster. Like you could have, like you could have super ultra make, ultra make a violent evil sky angel no man's sky <laughs> crash bandicoot featuring funky mode devil may cry done. <laughs> like basically, bazan. Bazinga fucking Grogita. <laughs> it's 
see, this is literally what the franchise had became, you know? Like, Bazinga Grogit Zurika, you know? <laughs> oh, man. The point is, the franchise has kind of become a joke, you know? Because how most of the story, because how the story has been, like, been repeated and I mean come on so like something like this should have fucking happened to to Sailor Moon at least in terms of the video games but instead they're giving us stories that are completely original and I don't know why I hate it <laughs> especially another story and it's completely original story I guess, you know, they named it right. Another story. But like any case, the franchise just kind of became lame. Like Dragon Ball, like I said, Dragon Ball used to be good. But then after the Boo Saga and then the... Uh, and then the motherfucking super. And don't even get me started with motherfucking Broly. I mean, remember when that Hulk... Remember when that hulky hunk of a muscle son of a bitch was... Was not, you know... Was probably the strongest thing alive? Like, remember when that son of... When that green-haired son of a bitch was the strongest thing alive? Especially upon watching the fucking, his fucking movie. Yeah. Was fucking insane. And how in most games he's literally, he can literally be touched and defeated just like any other opponent. But then, in real life, you would be cooked. You would be fucking cooked. The best bet that you used to do is to just fucking run away. Now, Goku can just sneeze at... Goku can literally sneeze at that motherfucker's goddamn abs. And he's gonna explode from the inside out. To the point where, where he literally should say, You're or Broly, you're already dead. What? Impossible! <laughs> like, literally, just sneeze at that guy's goddamn man boobs. And he's gonna explode from the inside out. Fist of the North Star style. <laughs> uh, I don't know. But like, Dragon Ball... No matter how great they are making it, in, especially in Sparking Zero, it is, uh, it is just a bit too lame for me, you know? And I mean, maybe that opinion will change if, when I start watching the actual, the actual anime in and not in any of the dubs, but in the original Japanese ones. Now, some of you might ask if they care enough. Some of you might ask, which, how do you prefer watching Dragon Ball Z if you start watching it? Like, would you prefer dub or sub? Well, I'm going to try and summarize as much as I can on this. Basically, uh, mainly, I would choose, mainly I would choose the dub. At least in some video games. Like some characters are good in dub. While others are bad in sub. And Goku and some characters 
are definitely good in boats. Like Goku. I just confused whether I would prefer uh, Masako Nozawa's great performance or Shin Simmel's icon or Shin Simmel's iconic performance. Like at times Goku is good in Japanese. While at other times he's just animated. Like I like I'm kind of a bit confused whether I would just have Kamehameha or Goku be like I'll never let you destroy my world Like Like honestly I would prefer to have both As for Regina I would definitely say Chris Sabat's performance. For Krillin, totally being lift up voice. Totally being lift up voice. Tien, Japanese. Yanta, my bias towards Toro Furia aside, yes, I am still liking. Some of Toro Foria's performance. Yes, I still like Toro Foria as Tuxedo Mask, okay? That's like me all you want. Like, I support his work, but I do not support his action. And that's a story for another day, <laughs> okay? But honestly, I would say that. Uh, I don't know, with how much Yamcha is shit, <laughs> I would say, uh, uh, but now, let's keep some pride into him, actually, fuck it, English, English Yamcha, <laughs> see, that's the problem, like, there are characters that are just good in dub, while others are bad in dub, you know, And there, there is uh, good old Chaozu. Well, I would say English Chaozu. Well, uh, would I prefer Goku or or Goku? Get the fuck off my planet right now! <laughs> I'm talking about King Kai, but I would, cer I would certainly prefer English Kai. Would I prefer Hawkeye or Destroy for good old Beerus? I would say English Beerus. Now, for the villains, I would say English Frieza. Current and old English Frieza, to be specific. Then there is Raditz. Raditz, I would prefer him in his English version. And Nappa as well. The current Funimation Nappa. Then there is uh, the Gimme Force. Japanese guys. English. Uh, English Berter. English Raku. English Raku, uh, Japanese Guldo, and finally, uh, Japanese Gimi. Yeah, I'm just that picky. Then there is, uh, then there is the Cell Saga. And well, Oh, it's... Oh, Piccolo. Yeah. I would say English Piccolo. 
and to be more specific, an English abridged pickle. <laughs> Definitely prefer Japanese trunks. And Gohan, English Gohan, definitely. Then there is a Cell Saga. English Cell, uh, English, Je English Cell, Japanese 18, English 17. And English 16. And then, and then there is English Boo, English Fat Boo to be specific. Japanese, Japanese Super Boo, and English Kid Boo. Well, there is, uh, well, I've mentioned English Beerus and English Beerus and Whis. <laughs> Those two are just much more idiotic than you could ever become. Why? <laughs> Whis, bring me the pudding now! <laughs> Before I fucking destroy your anus. <laughs> and definitely English Bardock. Uh, now for the fusions, I would say Japanese Vegito and English Gogeta. And then comes in the super and beyond the freaking villains. Well, I would say, I would say to give them the dub. Yeah, all of them can get the dub. Yeah. However, yeah, right. I'm gonna move on to probably one of the most, to probably one of the other most talked about section and the women, basically. And for the women, well, I have a pretty, pretty good specification. But first, who's best girl? Who's the best girl in the entire freaking franchise for me? Honestly, first comes Bulma, then Chi Chi, and then 18, and eventually Kefla, and well, uh, yeah, that'll be another long time, that'll be another story for a long time. Their voices, basically, I would prefer uh, English. English Bulma, English Bulma and Chi Chi, while we do, while we do in 18, can't keep their Japanese original. Definitely. So in conclusion, from all of that, I think, I think I would honestly, uh, watch the, I think I would honestly watch I think I would prefer Dragon Ball Z in English other than in Japanese. In terms of video games, because I'm definitely going Japanese while watching the anime itself. Why? Because of one simple problem. The music change. Yes, I said. The fucking music change. And this has been a thing that's been going on not only for Dragon Ball Z, but for other big name anime, and especially Sailor Moon. Yeah, I hate the music that is presented inside those goddamn, inside the dubs. Like, 
Hey, the voices are cool and everything, but the music just sucks balls. Sucks monkey fuck. Yeah, literally. Like, I'm sorry, the US music for most of the goddamn anime are just the worst. And like, if you are not, if, like, if you're not gonna have the rights for the goddamn for the goddamn original Japanese opening. Why not just dub it? Dub the fucking opening while keeping the original composition. I mean, come on. I literally don't have to listen to a watered down version of Smile Bomb while watching probably the best fucking dub of Yu Yu Hakusho. Or do not have to fucking listen to Rock the Dragon while while laughing and having a good time watching the English voices of the Dragon Ball. Or literally do not have to listen to fucking fighting evil by moonlight winning love by daylight while watching fucking while watching Sailor Moon. Like come on, I'm trying to get a good laugh at the DIC dub here. With all of the granola bars. <laughs> Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, the thing is, the change music really kills the dub more than the voices. Like I'm pretty sure the voices are good and everything, but then changing the music is a major fucking war crime for me. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. So if I'm gonna watch the anime itself, I think I'm gonna watch it in sub more than dub. But in general, I think this Dragon Ball deserves the dub. Yeah. Although, at the very least, if the anime can get good, you know. But you see, the anime, Dragon Ball, has been more focused on fighting more than anything. And it kind of, and it kind of barely show any good side of some character. Especially with, you know, Vegeta and Ball, if Vegeta ex Bulma relationship had kind of been more serious than, you know, Goku and Chi Chi. Like, they're barely there together, you know? And, I don't know, man. Most of it was all about beating the crap out of people. And most of it is to just save the world more than anything. And the thing is, they're training more than anything. They're training and achieving new colors and new goddamn hairstyle <laughs> more than more than you know giving us any peaceful time to think you know oh well so in my opinion honestly Dragon Ball had begun pretty good and could have been better, especially during the super time. Like super could, super could definitely use all the tournament of power related and all the ultra instinct bullshit. But then, why in the holy fuck did they have to recreate the battle of gods and resurrection of Frieza in such a terrible, tasteless way? I mean, the movies are there. Why not just create a whole better story out of a, like, pretty much after the goddamn the two movies? As a matter of fact, why, why not even make Super as a goddamn, as a goddamn follow-up after the two movies? Which exact, which exactly happened? But after a long wait, 
In other words, the anime is a franchise kind of suck. Halfway through, you know? Like, there are, like, I don't know. It, it is kind of repetitive. It has some kind of repetitive nature. And since that it's called Dragon Ball, nobody really dies in it. Like, nobody really dies in it. Except for a very few. Because after all, they just collected Dragon Ball and revived their people. And that's about it. <laughs> like, it is good, but it definitely, it can definitely improve. And it can definitely improve much better on everything, you know? In terms of story writing, how they manage their games, how they, how they can make it actually fun, you know? And the craziest thing about this is that, you know, Sparking Zero, aside of its, aside of it, you know, repeating what was already there in like millions of times, which is beating the crap out of each other, it is still famous. Oh well. Like I said, it definitely could have been better. Like, it could definitely improve much more. Because, believe me, the anime had, had a good potential. It had a good potential st starting from the Saiyan Saga at the Z part. And the very original anime had also a pretty good foundation, you know, where Goku was just a kid and learning his footing and pretty much the best thing that he was able to do was fist Piccolo very fucking hard that it humbled him. Yeah. I would watch the anime in sub, but definitely not in dub. Not for the voices, but for the musics. Yeah. And honestly, a game that's like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot can definitely be great. I mean, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, honestly, is honestly the best Dragon Ball Z game for me. Then comes after it, a uh, good old, good old Burst Limit. And then Xenoverse 1. And then Shin Budokai 1. And then Shin Budokai another road. Then Budokai won. Yeah. And honestly, I would have tried the Budokai Tenkaichi games. But yeah, the clunkiness of the gameplay and most of it's most of it's little stale stuff that we're in there are just not enough reasons for me to try them out. And the fact that some of these games can literally break your controller from how much input is required in it. No. <laughs> I'm not ready to sacrifice uh, my controller just for playing a video game. I mean, come on, Yakuza 3 had the worst fucking way of charging heat at the, at pretty much almost the end of every boss battle, where you literally, you literally mashed the shit out of the R2 button just to feel the heat. Like, I'm sorry, but that is the worst and that is one of the main fucking reasons why one of my controllers is technically not functional you know like bro this kind of trigger 
should be held down and pressed gently not to mash it up like literally it's horrible it's a horrible aspect now imagine doing something like that in Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi but you know 10 10 times more worse especially in the middle of a fight or some shit like for a beam clash or something like bruh no no way no way I'm getting that but to be honest to be honest like I said the franchise could definitely use a better direction rather than the rapid the repetitive nature of it you know it could use it could use a better direction a much better direction and and honestly the better direction was in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Dragon Ball GT the Saiyan Saga all the way to the Cell Saga and then um and then of course the very first Dragon Ball anime and most of the movies and the Broly and the first Broly movie <laughs> like I'm telling you like jeez we I literally would love to go back to the time where Broly was the strongest thing alive the strongest fucking thing alive no one can can't no one can touch this green haired big hunk of chunk abs motherfucker literally i miss a time where where this green haired you know buffed motherfucker would not be touched by anyone try some team attacks it will work try some super saiyan attack it will work barrage some he blasts out his ass. It won't work. Nothing will touch those abs. Like, my guy. <laughs> my guy is probably the equivalent of, you know, being fucking untouchable. He's probably the equivalent of Superman. Seriously. <laughs> he was so untouchable. Like, bro. Goku went Super Saiyan 3 at his ass, and yet he still got cooked. Everyone went Super Saiyan, and they all got, and they all kissed the mat. I'm telling you, that shit was wild. Really wild. So, uh, this is the last time I'm gonna say it. Dragon Ball Z was good, but it could definitely use a better direction in its entirety. And that's pretty much all what I'm gonna be saying. Like, honestly, I like Dragon Ball, but not to the point of hype. Not to the point of mad crazy about it. As a matter of fact, I like it, but at the same time, I don't. I love hate relationship with it. And that's all I'm gonna be saying. Well, gonna see you all next time. Much more positive time. And well, see y'all later.